guys, it's Jeremy here at Mental Music Meltdown, back with another video. What I have you today, guys, is a monster album review. The Gods of Metal are back, Judas Priest. Their 19th studio album entitled Invincible Shield. Invincible Shield, sorry. Um, I was super pumped for this album, as everyone in the metal community was. It's a monster band. It doesn't get much bigger than Judas Priest. Um, they have two versions of this album. The uh, standard edition, which is 11 tracks which is the one I kind of stuck to for the review. And they do have a deluxe version that has three bonus tracks up to 14. Uh, runtime on this album, the standard version, I think is like 52 and change. And the extended version or the deluxe edition with the three bonus tracks is like 62, I believe, 63. Um, 19 studio album from these uh, metal legends. And this was a banger album, guys. This fucking kicked ass. I was not disappointed. I was a little bit concerned after Firepower being so good that it wouldn't compare or it wouldn't be near as good, but they definitely delivered. Uh, these guys are all, for the most part, in their early 70s to mid 70s. Halford 72, Tipton's like 76, but it doesn't show on this album. They sound like they're guys in their 25, 30, still have something to prove. Um, they, this, this album has urgency to it. It has a ton of energy. Doesn't sound like a band that's near the end of their career. And it's just a banger of an album. If this was to be their last album before they called quits, I would be perfectly fine with that. They went out on a high note and it's a killer album. Uh, so 11 tracks in total. Overall, uh, first impression guys, pretty formulaic uh, Judas Priest, but in a good way. They have the dueling guitars, great guitar solos, Rob Halford screeling vocals over the top mid pace drumming uh, underneath to give it a little bit of balls and uh, pretty solid songwriting, great production by Andy Sneap again. He always has that in your face kind of bombastic um, production, very clear production as well. You can hear all the instruments perfectly fine. And going through the tracks, opening track, Panic Attack, definitely a banger to open up the album. Super heavy, great guitar, dueling guitars, great solo in this one. Halford's voice sounds amazing. He hits those really high notes. And I could definitely see that being a staple in upcoming uh, tours. The second track, The Serpent and the King. Man, Ralph Halford's voice really hits those high fals falsettos in this song. Like King Diamond level falsettos. I couldn't believe he was still able to hit those notes. And it's a, just a banger of a track. Another, another great traditional metal song. Great guitar work, really catchy. Get your head uh, fist in the air, head banging, all, the, all that. Uh, the third track, uh, the title track, Invincible Shield. Uh, this is like what I think of, like what I think of pure heavy metal to be. This song exemplifies that to 100%. It's just got that really, the metal feel to it. It's got that balls, it's got the, the soaring vocals. It's majestic, it's epic, it's got the great guitar work. It's just everything you want a heavy metal song to be. Definitely a standard for me. And then they took a little bit of a turn on the fourth and fifth track, uh, Devil in Disguise and Gates of Hell. They definitely have a heavier sound to them, more grit to them, not quite as polished sounding. Uh, Halford goes down to his lower register a little bit more where he's got that kind of gruff and he's got that mean kind of voice. He still has that intensity. Uh, I love these songs, definitely a different change in pace, much heavier, the riffs were crunchier and definitely lower, lower note range. Uh, I just love these songs, though. Really, really, really had balls to them. And uh, a lot of balls and, like, a lot of aggression. And uh, the, li the lower register, for sure. Deeper guitar riffs. And um, number six, The Crown of Horns. This is my least favorite song on the album. I didn't really know what to make of the song. It's kind of like a power ballad, but the chorus isn't belted out like most power ballads are. It was kind of hard to explain this one. It is kind of found, felt like a kind of a generic heavy metal song. It didn't quite seem to fit for me. The guitar work was still good, but the chorus kind of threw me off. It didn't have the same kind of vibe to it or something. Um, this was the one song I would have kind of taken off in my opinion. It wasn't, uh, wasn't quite as good. It didn't stand up to the other songs. Um, the next song, As God is My Witness, love this song, super high energy. The, the intensity on this song carries through the whole song, doesn't let up at all. And it's a good uh, change of pace after Crown of Horns. It just, they really come back right, at, right in your face with that intensity. 
and I really like that song. One of my favorites from the album. Uh, Trial by Fire was another banger. Great guitar work, great solo. I love when he gets to the Trial by Fire part. He's got so much grit and, and intensity to his voice. It sounds so mean. Uh, just pure heavy metal, that song. Really good sing-along song. I could see that being in a concert and people just with their fists in the air yelling Trial by Fire. Uh, really good tune. Escape from Reality was another one that was a little weird to me. And some parts in the vocals, midway through the song, he had like this kind of eerie sound to his vocals. I swear to God, it was Ozzy Osbourne. He had that really kind of eerie tone, say exactly like Ozzy. I was really surprised. I almost had to take a double check to see if Ozzy guessed it on one of the songs. It sounded that much like him to me. O overall, a good song. The vocals kind of threw me off a little bit. Uh, not a little bit weaker, but strong on the album for me, but overall pretty good still. Uh, Sons of Thunder was another banger, super heavy song, only three minutes in length. Uh, really good riff, really catchy. Just another classic heavy metal song by Priest. Is it, what'd you expect? And I really enjoyed the last song on the, well, the, the, the standard version, uh, Giants in the Sky. This was like a really good sing-along, kind of an epic sounding song, really good guitar work on this one as well. Um, great solo on this one as well. I found this one I really, after the second or third listen, I was really, really singing along and going into the chorus. I really enjoyed that song a lot. So uh, pros of the album, great production, bombastic in your face. Uh, really clear production as well. You can hear all the instruments. Uh, Halford's voice is, has never sounded uh, this good. It, like it's still hits the high register, still soars over the top. For his age, he his voice is incredible. It's it's almost mind boggling how he can put out that quality of a voice at the age of seventy two. Uh, great guitar work and solo still from the guys. Really good stuff overall. Um, standout tracks for me would be. Panic Attack, the title track, Devil in Disguise, uh, as, as God is My Witness, Trial by Fire, Sons of Thunder, and Giants in the Sky. So as you can see, I just named about over half the album. It's that good. Uh, the other songs are still really good too. Serpent in the Sky, those songs are all great as well. Gates of Hell, the other ones I liked a little bit, just a little bit more. And the two weaker songs on the album, from my opinion, were number one, Easily, Crown of Horns. That one you could take off, in my opinion. And then Escape from Reality, I'm kind of on the fence about. I really enjoyed it, but wasn't quite as good as the other ones. Uh, the length of the album, 52 minutes. For this style of music, I think it really should only be about 40 minutes, to be honest. So maybe if they took off Crowd of Horns and Escape from Reality, made it nine tracks, I think it would have been a lot better. It would have punched a little harder overall, and I think it would have been a little bit better. Uh, and the album cover, I'm not a big fan of, to be honest, guys. I think the color really pops. I love that they still have the traditional logo on there. I think on a CD or a vinyl rack, it would really be effective. It would grab your eye looking, you know, scanning across uh, album covers on the, on the shelf. But I, I just not digging the album cover for some reason. It just looks too, too digital or something. Or I know we're in 2024, guys, before you rip my balls off in the comments. But uh, just something about it I just don't like. It looks too, like an, too much like an arcade game or something or... So it's just something about it, it just doesn't doesn't connect with me but overall guys killer album I'm not disappointed at all like i said if this was to be their last album uh, i would be perfectly fine with that they'd be ending, ending on a high note and uh for a rating out of 10 i would give this i would give it an 8.25 out of 10 i think if they lost um crown of horns and took it off the album it would bump this up to almost a nine for me. It's, it's a really good album. So let me know down below, below, guys, what you thought of the album. Did you like it better than Firepower? Um, I think I like Firepower just a smidge better, like a hair better. Uh, but this is a really good album. It's killer. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for a couple more uh, reviews coming up in the next couple days. This was a killer week for our new albums. I still want to review the new Midnight album. I'm pumped for that. And uh, the new X Order. So stay tuned for those guys. Thanks for watching and keep it metal.